weeks and weeks and weeks, it feels like. <laughs> Chuck, are you there this afternoon? I am there, and again, with the cast of thousands, as it were, so. We have uh, several guest speakers today, and why don't I turn this over to you, Chuck, and we'll let you go ahead and do the introduction. And you should have the screen. Very good. Well, again, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us here at the end of the year and uh, everybody's getting ready to wrap up and head out the door and heading out the door is kind of the basis for what we've talked about and uh, this is actually a bit of a repeat session that Bill and I did at NCCET earlier this year. But the content was basically about how a continuing ed unit might be able to break free of a campus credit system. And that is the crux of what we're about today. I'd like to do some initial introductions. For those of you that don't know him, Dr. Bill Beisel. Bill, welcome. Good afternoon. You bet. Bill is the Director of Continuing Ed at Lakeland Community College in uh, the suburb of Cleveland. And um, uh, has been in continuing ed a number of years in the Ohio area, and uh, we'll hear more about his story a little later. We'd also like to welcome Michelle. Michelle, a good day. Hi, good day to you. Thanks for having me. Uh, Michelle is the IT specialist for the continuing ed unit at George Mason University, and uh, you're at the Fairfax campus, right? Correct. And uh, we'll be had, had some stories related to this. We'll invite her to participate. And of course, those of you who have been in webinars know Lori, our webinar queen. And so Lori, thanks again. And she's the author and artist primarily responsible for the slides. OK, so what are we going to do? Or let's ask the question, why are you here? Now, I know we've got a number of Aceware customers who are already have been able to apparently make the case. So uh, we're assuming a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> certainly the intent of this was for people who might already be locked into a credit system and might be wanting to do the Moses and leave. But if you are away from it now, uh, like I said, <clears throat> you're making the case to leave a campus registration system or avoid going to one. Uh, you'd like to maybe hear about how one unit was able to break free, and that's where we'll hear from Bill and perhaps pick up some tools or ammunition to fight the campus system battle that you might think might be coming down the road. And I've talked with several of you, and I know that's, that's been an, a looming issue. The war, the, the clouds are forming, the battle drums are sounding in the distance, <clears throat> and you're just trying to figure out if we can keep that from happening. Well, so following the Moses analogy, what's on today's tablet? Well, number one, We'll give you my impression of what the five battlefronts in this war is all are all about. Um, we'll give you kind of my perspective of the difference between the credit and non-credit. We'll get to hear the parable, and that's the parable of Bill and how Lakeland uh, dealt with theirs, and then get some feedback from Michelle as well, and introduce you to the Jerry Maguire tool, which has to do with, again, a tool that perhaps can help you um, in your uh, approach, and the, certainly covering this business of how we show the campus the money and getting into questions. So I'm going to roll into that. Lori, anybody uh, have any chat that we need to address at this time? Nope. Sounds like we're moving along fine. Very good. Well, let me show you what I think are the five primary battle fronts in this whole business of trying to stay out of a campus credit system. And again, I'm not Naming names, but that would be, of course, the Banner and the PeopleSoft and uh, Datatel, <clears throat> the ones that are used by campuses and have all kinds of powerful things, but bottom line is we don't think they're that good for continuing it. Number one, campus high priests are vested in their credit system, and that kind of goes without saying. We're going to talk about the semantics of the word registration software and why that is sometimes an issue in trying to get your administration to understand your situation. I think Bill can address that a bit more. The, the, the third one, I think, is that overall push for central control. And again, if we're, if we're trying to understand why people do things the way they do it on a campus. Now, uh, some of you seasoned uh, university and college uh, administrators would say, well, wait a minute, Chuck. Reason has nothing to do with decisions on a college campus. 
Uh, I was there once, so I can say that. But um, there are some issues related to the central administration really wanting to keep everything under their thumb and under their control. Certainly one of the issues to deal with whenever you're talking about software or new software is your IT staff. And the, the bottom line is the battle staff, uh, battle-weary IT staff, that once they've installed a campus system, they are so beat up that they don't even want to think about doing another one. And then finally, the money issue, the folks in charge of the treasure chest are not excited at all about spending any new money on a new registration system. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what we'll be talking about. Um, the different world business, and, and I think this, this we're going to kind of talk about our perspective of what is the big question. And again, in your case, I'm preaching to the choir because hopefully you as an ACEWARE user know what the difference is. But that how do we help people understand the differences in, in registration software? Uh, this was the sheet we put together. Uh, Neil uh, Lark from Tri-County in South Carolina and I put together about the differences between traditional uh, credit software uh, and your non-credit software. And um, as you kind of look through that, you can kind of see fixed schedule anytime. Prescribed fees, any CE people will negotiate anything for you. Customer service with the question mark, customer service with an asterisk. Data screens that go on and on and on versus a compact screen. Reports that are specific, reports that are nimble and agile. Very few financials, end of year, fiscal, uh, CE wants to know the dollars to the penny. Marketing is generally, again, uh, uh, it's uh, prescribed to completely different systems. And of course, for CE, marketing has to be part of the process. For the student itself, a campus system wants them out of there in four years, or maybe five, get that extra tuition. But for CE, you want to keep that student around forever and ever because of that lifetime value. So that's kind of our overall take on that. Um, so at this point, I think we're about ready to move over to Bill's area. And Bill, I'm going to give you control over the keyboard. And uh, we'll introduce, uh, again, Bill Beisel, Dean of CE at Lakeland. And uh, you can click on that and see the rest of the goodies there. But uh, the different direction that Lakeland ended up. So Bill, carry on. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for the opportunity to be and to share my story. I'm not sure if my story is a, is a good story or a bad story. I can tell you that uh, I have been engaged in an implementation process for the last year. And for about uh, nine months of that year, it was, uh, it was sheer agony. And so uh, with Chuck uh, coining the, uh, the title for today's session, The Moses Chronicles, I'd rather think of this as the agony and the ecstasy. <laughs> it's, good, uh, good. It, it's really been a, a leadership and an operational challenge for me to, um, to implement this project. Uh, we encountered great resistance along the way. And in fact, uh, I grew to, to hate Thursdays with a passion. Uh, we met monthly for, for the last year, the implementation team, and I'll talk a little more about that. But we met Thursday morning, and uh, I would come out of that meeting beat up every Thursday for about 40 weeks straight. Uh, so it's been a challenge, but uh, uh, I think you'll, you'll like the end of the story. We're, we're doing quite well. But here at Lakeland, we are uh, what I would consider to be a fairly typical medium-sized community college. Uh, we are in uh, a an eastern suburb of the city of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, it's a major metro area uh, comprised of uh, Cleveland, Akron, Canton, Youngstown, and, um, and Lorraine. So we have a, a large population base here, but we're on the edge of it on the east side on, on Interstate 90. Uh, we're considered to be, in my opinion, a, a fairly innovative community college. Uh, we're part of the University System of Ohio, which has uh, just been formed within the last year or so. And uh, our president is regularly called upon for his leadership and his opinion within the state system. Uh, so we have a lot of respect and a lot of visibility. Uh, but we're now 
at a different programming paradigm, and that is that the work that we're doing needs to conform to a space strategic plan, which is a real challenge. Uh, but what, what will happen in the next year or so is that the Ohio Board of Regents will tie workforce development funding and funding for business and industry uh, to uh, performance standards within the state. So it's changing the way we're doing business, uh, and we have to be uh, much more agile and proactive uh, in the work that we do. And that's one of the reasons why uh, ACEWARE is so important to us. But our college was created in 1964 by a vote of the people. We're levy funded, and uh, that, that levy funding is important to us. And, and non-credit programming uh, is very important in terms of community visibility, uh, particularly when it's time for the, uh, the levy to be renewed. We have about 8,500 credit students at the college with a, an FTE equivalency of about 5,000. And we have an expense budget uh, of about $63 million. So we're, we're fairly small. Uh, we're located on 100 ac uh, 400 acres, and we have 10 uh, interconnected buildings on our campus. Uh, it's a nice place. But basically, we're, we're a typical community college, metropolitan community college. Our continuing ed program is part of the Lakeland Institute for Economic Development. And so we have uh, uh, broad general responsibilities related to economic and workforce development within our service area. And this includes uh, traditional continuing education, customized training for business and industry. Uh, we have several specialized training centers like our police academy or our men's resource center and a, and a uh, full service conference center. But in most regards, uh, we are what you would consider to be a prototypical for full service non-credit uh, continuing ed unit. And I believe that, uh, that we're pretty well respected across the state and beyond. Uh, we are profitable. Uh, we're self-supporting. And we, we have approximately 13,000 non-credit enrollments annually. And uh, interestingly, this is, uh, this is down from nearly 20,000 uh, prior to uh, an ERP installation that we had. Uh, we're a lean operation. We only have seven full-time and four part-time employees uh, and a few students. So, and, and we are... Uh, we're a, a, uh, an ACE web user, as, as I told you. So let me see if I can switch this slide. Do I have control of this machine, Chuck? You are controlling. All right, there we go. Um, the next slide, the challenge. Uh, we had a three-year design phase where Banner was implemented at this campus. Uh, we implemented it in the fall of 2005. And the conceptual design was to create a one-stop system for all student services. So this includes registration, first hour function, cashiering, uh, counseling, just whatever uh, services a student might need. This is a, a one-stop system. So at that time, continuing education lost control of our, of our registration uh, and, and business functions, and everything was centralized. But we had a, uh, what I call a phased integration of the program. Uh, as I said, it included uh, all of the uh, uh, admissions, registration, business and finance, purchasing, human resources, the foundation. Uh, Banner tied all of this together. And um, over the years, uh, the design phase, uh, there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears involved with it. And it basically involved all support offices within the institution. Uh, interestingly, uh, continuing education uh, had some input into the process, but we were not included on the core steering committee uh, nor were we included in the decision process. And uh, I think that this was a, a major oversight on the part of the college long term. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why the ERP system really didn't work well for us. Bill, by uh, ERP, again, you might give uh, the extended description of what an ERP is, which is? Well, it's uh, an, an employee resource program that covers uh, all aspects of um, management of, of the business and human infrastructure within the institution. So HR is tied to business and finance, and business and finance okay. is tied to the foundation. Yeah, it, it would be the big, the great big system level operational software that runs the institution there. So. That's correct. Yeah, that's go correct. ahead. So the immediate result of, of launching Banner in the fall of 05 was that we lost business. We lost enrollments. We lost revenue. Uh, and it was largely due to the of how students must uh, must register for our programs. 
Um, and I'm going to switch the slide here. And let's see, this will... Just click again to get... These the bullets will phase in? Okay, I'm going to click it again. I'll give you all of them right there. Um, for example, uh, believe it or not, we had four pages of registration instructions in the back of our catalog. Now, that's four 8.5 by 11 pages. That included uh, general app uh, instructions. We had students had to apply to the college, just like a degree applicant. We had a registration form, and then we had a guide sheet for trying to figure out what Lakeland Online meant. So you can imagine how, how a busy human resource executive dealt with this. You know, they just basically told us to take a hike, and, uh, and we lost business right away. Um, in addition, as you can see from the, uh, from the bullets on the screen, um, there were a lot of operational issues uh, related to, uh, to how we did business. We just lost all agility, all, all flexibility, and all control on what we were doing. Uh, we, we didn't have reporting. Uh, we had a, a complex registration system, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, our president tried to register for one of our courses, and, and that's one of the reasons why we were successful with this project. Um, but the ER, ERP system was intrusive. It, it lacked flexibility. It was confusing. Um, there was no shopping cart. Uh, we, had, we, we generated accounts payable problems. Uh, for example, even though we required payment up front, students could register and not pay, and it resulted in a receivables problem for us that that hovered fifteen to twenty thousand dollars at any given time. And um, we weren't able to build in incentives. Uh, we didn't have any flexibility with our marketing, with with setting our fees. Um, we had to rely on others all of the time uh, in our business functions. And uh, it just, just created uh, major, major problems for us. Um, so essentially our opportunity was that we were in operational disarray uh, with the revenues declining and, and the enrollments declining. Uh, but as it turns out, we had the president's attention. And the reason why we had the president's attention was that he actually tried to register for a non-credit course and couldn't figure out how to do it. And his face got red, and steam started coming out of his ears, and and uh, he was uh, just genuinely, genuinely frustrated about about trying to do this. And and we knew that that, that was the case. So it was the really a, a great opportunity for us to prove our point. Um, so we really at that point developed a, a business uh, and marketing plan that uh, to to implement a new registration system that uh, that we felt. Uh, was uh, progressive and, and on, the, on the front edge of the technology as opposed to, uh, to being on the, the, the trailing edge. But the bottom line here is that without the executive support, we could not have moved forward. And uh, we had the president's support and we had the vice president's support. And so the other pieces uh, really fell into place. But it took a long time. Um, but every, essentially the bottom line was that with the exception of those two individuals, um, Every business and operational office on campus resisted this project, almost to a person. And so uh, what we did uh, uh, this past January 11th, we hosted a compression planning session where uh, we allowed people to come together and actually uh, tell us what all the issues were. Um, and, uh, and I believe that that was a, a very successful uh, initiative in terms of beginning the process of buy-in. And recall that Continuing Ed was not involved uh, in the decision process with Banner, which, which created a lot of problems. Uh, we learned from that lesson, and we did want all of the support offices involved in this uh, implementation. Um, so, but at the same time, uh, I experienced a lot of what I'll call uh, deceitful activities that, that included misinformation, starting of rumors, less than professional behavior, outright hostility, um, kinds of activities that, and, and interactions, which were really uh, difficult to deal with. Um, but we had the support of the president, and uh, again, it was a leadership exercise and an operational exercise to, to begin to, um, to get this going. 
So the compression planning uh, session allowed people to vent and, and get their hostilities out and, uh, and have their voice be heard. And the net result was we came up with about 60 issues. And uh, they're all important to certain people. And, and it's like morale, uh, staffing, cashiering, security, like who's going to carry the money around, how are you going to do your billing, your collections, your refunds, your reporting, your transcripts? And, oh, my gosh, are we going to have duplicate ID cards? And, yeah, it's just stuff like that. It was just almost an endless list. Uh, but we got, the, we got the concept out, and people had their input. And uh, as a result of, of that planning session, we came up with, with five basic assumptions uh, to begin. Uh, one Continuing Ed will own the registration system. Two, we'll maintain our own separate registration and cashiering operations, uh, but not business and finance. We will continue to work with business and finance for banking, reporting, integration with banner, auditing, and those sorts of things. Uh, then Continuing Ed will maintain our own records. And uh, the fifth is that we'll, we'll build and maintain our own course records each semester. Uh, all of this is, is a diametrical turnaround from what we had before in that we had no control before uh, over anything. So what we're really doing now is, uh, is we're beginning to, to change the culture. And uh, that's, that, I think, is an important concept to this lesson because uh, without the support of the president and without the, the uh, culture change, uh, this would have been uh, almost impossible to do. And... Uh, and what I did was uh, I, I implemented a, a Harvard Business School model related to, to leading change. And that comes from a book by the name uh, from John Cotter's Leading Change book. And it involves um, establishing a sense of urgency, creating the guiding coalition, uh, developing a vision and a strategy, uh, a communication aspect uh, that involves understanding and buy-in, empowering our staff, and then generating short-term wins. Uh, that's where we are in this. Uh, there's two more parts of it, which is consolidating gains and producing more change, never letting up, and then uh, new approaches in, in changing the culture. And this has been uh, a good model for me to follow uh, because it is, it is systematic. It is tested at one of the uh, country's great business schools, uh, and it, it actually works. So. Using this strategy, I went ahead and appointed an upper-level steering committee that included uh, many of the people who were the primary resistors uh, so that they could help us operationalize our, our basic assumptions about how we run the businesses, the business. And, and the net result was uh, we began to change the culture uh, essentially through, um, through empowerment and buy-in. Uh, these people went from telling us 110 reasons why we couldn't do something to uh, actually uh, say, wow, we could change that. We could do this, this, and this, and, and we'll fix that problem. Uh, and that was uh, kind of a, a great day when we, when, when we crossed that barrier. Um, and then we developed a business plan that, uh, that incorporated kind of a hybrid model with ACE where, where we used Argos reporting uh, that gave our business and finance folks the, the information that they needed uh, to pull from uh, from the electronic systems. So uh, the net result was that we developed a, a, cro a close working relationship with our financial systems and deputy treasurer person, and, and she really bought in uh, big time. So um, it, it's, been, it's been an interesting project, and, and I can tell you that uh, when we started this, the, the support offices in business and finance um, and IT basically gave me a projected budget of $1,111,801 uh, that it would take to implement this project. And, and they needed six and a quarter full-time employees and <laughs> software and students and yada, yada, yada. Well, I can tell you that uh, we got that $1,111,801 down to 57000 and uh, we launched the project uh, with one additional work study student. Uh, and through our, our core committee, our team, we negotiated the options, the IT options, and we negotiated the budget. 
and we developed the financial protocols that the budget office could live with. And then we tested everything for two solid weeks, and, and that's what the business office wanted. Uh, so, and then we set a launch date, and that launch date was ultimately it was August 11th, uh, but after we set the first launch date, then we set a second one, and then I think we even set a third one. Uh, and so about a week, a week apart, wasn't it? There? It, was, no. it was a work in progress. So yeah. the bottom line here is that we launched our system on August 11th of this year, uh, as of uh, today, we've taken 3,273 registrations, with 26% uh, of those coming in exclusively over the web, complete web transaction shopping basket kind of format with credit cards. The internal staff are 100% supportive. Uh, we don't have any operational issues. Our executives are pleased. But yet, at the same time, uh, we're a work in progress, and we've got an ambitious agenda. And we're just getting started, so we're, we're excited. Uh, we, we've had a great, great relationship with Aceware Systems, and the support has been, been absolutely uh, perfect. So um, all I can say is that uh, stay tuned. We're a work in progress, and, and I don't know if we're a case study or not, but it's been a leadership challenge, and, and I think we've, uh, we've worked in such a way that uh, the people who gave us the biggest trouble ultimately uh, jumped on the truck. And, and they may have had a little nudge from the president in a, an internal communication, which was a little pointed, should I say, uh, yeah. but they jumped on the truck. And, yeah. uh, and we're doing well. So, um, Chuck, I'm gonna, that's my story, and I'm sticking okay. to it. I'm going to transition it back to you. All right, very uh, good. Well, I'll, um, I'm going to kind of summarize up, if you would, on your behalf, Bill, and then we'll ask Michelle to share a little bit about GMU and uh, then see if Lori has any chat going on. I think kind of reviewing what you've talked about is your idea of building a team approach, developing the plan with your compression planning model. Uh, you really focused on changing the culture, and I, and I think you had the help of the epiphany from the president, which is somewhat a unique circumstance. Uh, Chuck, but again, let, let me, Chuck, let me say that... Go ahead. Without executive support, it's, it's virtually impossible to implement a project like this yeah. on a campus like ours. Yeah, and, and I think that's, a, that's kind of a challenge for those that are, that are not in there without having that connection. So um, anyway, um, Michelle from George Mason, I'll, uh, you had a little bit of a similar experience, although you uh, we're able to stay separate, so why don't you share a little bit about what happened to GMU before we see if Lori has any chat going on. Sure. Um, we, uh, like uh, Bill, um, are a banner institution. Uh, we implemented student in the fall of uh, 2004. Um, and at that point, uh, we were going through reaccreditation as well. And our accrediting body, the uh, Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, requires that all non-credit student activity be housed in the same system as the credit side student activity. So we were issued a mandate uh, somewhat. Um, they told us that we're implementing Banner and you're going to use it, um, which was somewhat scary for us in, in continuing ed because Banner doesn't do what we need it to to do the way that it needs to get done. Um, so what we did, we, we took an approach that was similar. We pulled together um, anyone in the university that handles non-credit activities because we're not the only office. We're just the biggest office. And we pulled together a committee um, and, and built a case um, to bring to uh, the executive level to let them know that, you know, we're willing to do this, uh, but all of these things have to happen first. Um, and in that case, it came through that we wouldn't be able to make Banner adapt and change to accommodate everything that we do. So we were able to, at that time, continue um, using uh, what was our current registration software and then eventually uh, migrate over to Aceware. And now we are currently working on an automated process to get all of that student information 
uh, transferred electronically into Banner so that we are in compliance with everything. So uh, all in all, we were lucky enough to not be forced into the situation of using a system that didn't work for us, but by getting the support and pulling together all the information, we were able to come to an agreement with the executives uh, here at Mason to make everything work for everyone. Super. Well, we may come back to that in a little bit here, Michelle. So appreciate your feedback here. I'm going to go back to our original, the, the big five that we kind of talked about uh, right at the beginning about some of the five reasons why it's so hard to leave now um, a campus system. And, and again, for those of you that are already separate, this will kind of relate. But um, because of the fact that once a credit system is in place, and if you are in the credit system, no one is going to go to you and say, hey, how's it going? Are you doing well? Would you like to do something different? If you're not happy with your state of affairs, you've got to take the battle to them. And uh, in the case of George Mason, they were outside the box, and uh, they, had, uh, they were able to make the case to stay out, which is a little different. In Bill's case, though, uh, you know, the president wasn't necessarily sitting there, or the vice president saying to Bill, hey, are you ready to change? Are you ready to change? Bill had to kind of, you know, push that forward. Um, number two, the problem with the words, semantics, words matter, semantics matter, and that is that um, the word registration software is, again, if you say a truck is not just a truck. And fruit, uh, fruit is fruit, but apples do not equal oranges. And the big issue there is that um, the word registration software is that with, if you're talking about what well, you need registration software for CE, uh, what they're talking, they say, what do you mean registration software? We have a registration package. It's called Banner or PeopleWare or Datatel. But the issue is that they just don't get it. You know, the differences between, uh, and that's going back to that uh, comparison chart we mentioned earlier, the huge differences between a package designed for continuing ed, which is really almost more of a, if you would, an entrepreneurial or a business marketing plan software, rather than a auditing uh, tracking, which is really what Campus Credit has to do. The institutional thirst for control, and that is, again, at the higher level, the, the, the directors want to keep their fingers on everything. And again, and this is kind of, I think, uh, most of you who are using ACEWARE are doing something like this, is to give to Caesar that which is Caesar's. And if we're talking about financial information, uh, that you generate those cash box reports that generate the account level finances, and you pass that on to uh, the uh, finance system uh, at the campus level. Uh, and again, that's the thing you can promise is that, uh, and I'll, you're doing that right now. Certainly another huge, huge one, since most of you don't have your own IT people, Michelle's kind of an anomaly, an anomaly, I'll get you named right, Michelle in that she is an IT person assigned to a CE department. Uh, but most people don't have a Michelle, and so for them, they have to be concerned with how do you get IT on board. And that question is, is how do you disarm them peacefully without getting into a fight? Because you don't want to get into a fight with the IT staff, since eventually you've got to deal with them. Well, how can you do that? Number one, um, you know, and it's hard to tell them this, but that a dedicated non-credit package, baseware or otherwise, honestly, is not as hard to set up as a campus-wide one. Um, and again, in our case, we did a survey recently, and we said most clients reported that about one to five hours of IT-level support, where they've got to do something with the server a month, generally will keep them keep them going. And that's in counting modifying reports or if you wanted to edit web pages, which, of course, is an, a cosmetic kind of issue. And the other element that you make your case for to IT is that uh, if you get your maintenance agreement with the vendor and your support agreement with Aceware, uh, the support for your package comes from the software vendor rather than IT needing to become expert on whatever software you're running in order to run the program. Um, 
Okay, number five, dealing with the money changers or dealing with the money lenders now. What is it that you need to deal with? Well, talk to them in the language they understand. And again, from the standpoint of uh, breaking out of a system that you might already be in, um, you need to do what Jerry was doing. And that's to say, show me or show them the money. Uh, of why it costs less or why you will save by investing in a dedicated package. And this is where I'm excited about introducing the cost estimator. And this is a spreadsheet that Lori put together that talks about the financial benefits of using a dedicated package versus whatever you're doing now. And I'm going to flip over to that. And this is a live spreadsheet uh, that you use to make the case on why you should either A, stay with Aceware, or B, switch from your credit system to Aceware. So how does it work? Well, you, f you go in and indicate what is the wage and benefits for your, your data entry staff. Put in the number of courses you enter a year, how many registrations you do a year, how many terms do you do? Number of catalogs, if you're printing a catalog. Oh, that's only three. Um, is web registration live? We'll say no if you are, don't have a live registration. And the total number of names in the database. OK, now based on, and what is the average fee per course? Uh, 250. <clears throat> OK, based on that, uh, now we go down and in the following set of items, you indicate how long it would take to complete a task in the package that the campus is wanting you to use. So in Banner, um, I've seen as varying estimates, we'll say 1.5 minutes. OK, well, right now, we figure you can do a name in A-square in 6 tenths of a minute. That's under 40 seconds. And you can probably do it faster if it's just a name and address. $2,700 worth of savings. Finding a student in a database. Well, maybe it takes 15 seconds to do it in the campus. Well, 15. Make that uh, 0.25 seconds, or 0.25 minutes. <clears throat> You've saved $600 in lookups. How long does it take to register for a single class? Maybe two and a half minutes by the time you go through all the cases. You see what we're doing here. <clears throat> We're going down to how long does it take to set up a course? Well, it may take five minutes to do it. Um, actually, the five-minute estimate in ACEWARE is, is, well, actually, for the first class. Well, for the second class, uh, because of the clone feature, <clears throat> you really begin to get some savings. So right now, we've got $9,300, $6,800. And now we're talking reports. Uh, printing a name roster. Well, the issue is how long does it take to get a name roster generated? Maybe you've got to export and import attendance rosters. Again, uh, if you're having to export and import in order to get these particular reports run, uh, prepare certificates. You've got to export. You've got to create a format, uh, generate that. <clears throat> it doesn't take long to begin to see a huge amount of savings in task savings. Now we go down below here, and we put in some estimated numbers that if we could get 30% of our enrollments online, we'd save 54000 How much money would we save using an integrated email tool? Uh, general reporting tool. There's more. There's more. <laughs> this is beginning ability to waitlist students. And what we're saying is that if we can't waitlist students and keep track of them and enroll them in these classes after the fact, we're going to lose money. Um, and again, um, the numbers are tilted a bit, perhaps, and maybe we can fine tune those. But from our little scenario, you can make a case for almost a third of a million dollars of savings by using a real program. Uh, Bill, uh, that would only give you five years, and you could have amortized that million dollars that you That's were sure. dealing with. Yes, sir. Um, well, I'm going to ask uh, Bill or Lori or, or Michelle to make any comments, and we'll see if there's any chat at this point. We'll take a little bit of a break. We've, we're almost done. Because this is the point I really wanted to indicate. This tool is available. 
uh, we're going to put that up on the website for downloadability. And um, if you're interested in it sooner, shoot Lori an email, and we'll email that to you. Comments, Bill or Lori, or Bill or Lori or Michelle? No, nope, I have no comment. Not right now. How are we doing? Any chat bubbling up, uh, Lori? Uh, everybody fairly quiet, just taking notes like crazy. Everybody wants to know when the slides will be available, and we'll have the slides available after the presentation and the recording, if all goes well, sometime tomorrow. Right. The uh, recording takes a bit to render, and probably tomorrow morning we should have that up on online for you to uh, come up and download. So, and all for for anybody that has not been an experienced person in this, um, I'm going to get to our website on the Aceware website, aceware.com. All of the webinars that we do are stored in the webinar archive area, <clears throat> and. Uh, we see all the webinars that have been done, and the uh, special uh, other good stuff is where this will end up showing. <clears throat> so that's where it will be uh, tomorrow morning when you uh, when you come back to the system. So, um, okay, let's um, let's go back now and um, wrap things up. Hopefully we've given you some ideas about what you can do with this, um, that we've got some of those major objectives, and Bill and, and Michelle are also proof that it can be done. Um, I'm going to <clears throat> go back and ask Michelle again. I think one of, the, one of the strategies that it's a little different for avoiding going in than it is to break out once you're inside, Michelle, but I think wasn't one of your criteria that, hey, uh, you can play the, uh, well, I'd love to do this if kind of game, if you would, and say, well, here are our needs. If the campus system can provide, you know, like I said, fast data entry, I can get a registration through in 60 seconds or less because of the volume and because of our need to, to be efficient. Uh, that's great. Uh, if a campus system can provide us the battery of reports we're used to getting, if, if, if. Was that part of the strategy, Michelle? It was. Um, you sort of have to pick your battles with it as well. Um, we knew that uh, we would have to comply um, with the accrediting body uh, and do what they wanted us to do. We just wanted to make sure that we were going to be able to complete our business tasks as efficiently as possible because they weren't going to give us any more staff. Um, but they expected us to do the same amount of work. Uh, and it, it, a lot of it came down to the inflexibility of uh, the banner system as far as uh, things that, that Bill touched on. We do require payment up front uh, at the time of registration, and banner uh, didn't have that shopping cart registration type system, so it wouldn't have worked for us. Uh, we offer uh, a vast array of discounts on every one of our courses, and none of them are the same uh, because of our distributed locations. We have three different offices with three different um, focuses uh, and, and tons of different discounts. And we brought those uh, financial people from the financial offices in and said, we need to do this, this, and this, and it could change on the fly. Uh, and Banner just wasn't flexible enough um, for us in that aspect either. And it was getting uh, all of this information brought to light uh, because anyone that doesn't do it day to day doesn't know that you have to do this many different things. So gathering that information and, and just letting people know was, was the biggest uh, benefit that we had on our side. They didn't realize, but once we let them know that, it became much less difficult for them to understand why we couldn't do it. Sure. Good point. Good point. Um, sure. Uh, Lori, any other questions or chat going on on your side? Michelle, can you chat a little bit about the SACS requirement? You touched on the fact that all non-credit had to be housed in one area. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, the 
SACS accreditation uh, just requires that all of all of the student information be housed in one uh, campus-wide accessible system. Uh, in our case, it is Banner. Um, and what we are currently doing, um, our day-to-day -day processing is done in ACEWARE, uh, and we pull out reports, uh, manual reports at this point, to get that information over to um, our registrar's office, who in turn is doing a manual entry process and it's just basically the bio uh, demo information, name, address, uh, birth date, um, and then what courses they were registered in uh, with the number of CEUs um, associated with those courses, um, and if they've completed a certificate, because we have several certificate programs, that is all noted in the banner system. So if they come back, they can have what we call a non-credit record we can't call it a transcript because it, it isn't credit-bearing activity, but it's basically the same thing as a transcript for any non-credit student. And SACS just required that if we were going to do that, it had to be housed in the same system as the credit students. Okay, very good. Now, um, and again, I think Michelle alluded to the fact that uh, she and I are working on, or Michelle, George Mason and Aceware are working on a banner export tool. So we'll go ahead and, 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 and mention that. Uh, but basically, it's a report in Student Manager that extracts data in a particular layout and uh, that the IT staff have built a data upload to go into Banner so that the name and the address and the bio and the registration data will not have to be rekeyed once the system is, is tuned. And that we will then actually also bring back into Student Manager the Banner student ID so that we will actually have the bona fides uh, identifier to match the student up between the two systems for future uh, data updates. So. Uh, that, that's still a work in progress, and, and at some point we may have a webinar about that, Michelle. So uh, we'll, we'll let you be front center. Okay. Uh, Bill, uh, let me ask you, and this is Michelle kind of brought this up, but the idea of the process of, of going to bat, making the case, taking the case to the high priest, if you would, on campus, um, do you feel that uh, continuing ed is stronger in the position on the campus by virtue of having, uh, again, stood in those meetings with everybody else? Yeah, I would say absolutely yes, Chuck. Um, but uh, I, I guess you, in any campus political environment, you're only as good as, as the strength of your character. And uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, success or failure depends on your ability to establish good collaborative working relationships where people know you and trust you and value your opinion and know that when you say you're going to do something, you do it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're in good shape, uh, but I think it's because of the power of the team uh, and, and the, the, the quality of the people involved. Good point, good point. And again, I, I said, it's not it's not an easy task. I mean, like I said, Bill still shows scars. I, I saw some myself, you know, uh, from the process. But I was, I was trying to give him an opportunity to say that I think uh, at the end of the day uh, that I, I hope you're feeling that that fight was worth it and that you're able to now control your own destiny a bit more with uh, being able to be outside of the, that central system. So we, we have taken a quantum leap forward. Good. Good. We, we are, we're just, you, you can't even compare us to our previous organization. And uh, by the way, we have no receivables. So you're all collected. That's super. That's super. With the exception of billings, yeah, yeah. that's correct. That's good. Um, Lori, any chat going on that we should address to our panelists before we let everybody go? I don't believe so, unless anybody has a last-minute question. Again, um, well, let me, uh, on behalf of Lori, thank Bill and Michelle for, for spending the time this afternoon when they could be out Christmas shopping or uh, dicking the tree or enjoying the snacks that are probably in the office um, coffee room there. Um, we sure appreciate your joining us and uh, everybody in the audience for setting in, and everybody's been listening 100% attentive. 
Uh, we will uh, bring the recording up. Uh, we'll, the spreadsheet will be available for download soon, and if you want it sooner, uh, we'd be happy to email it to you. So, uh, well, guys, thank you much. It's been a great, um, great session, and Lori, it's been a great year of webinars, and we thank you. And uh, uh, again, last note is that our next webinar will be in 2009. It'll be the reporting ace cars, not Oscars but Aceware uh, reporting stars of the best reports of 2008. And uh, Lori and I will be trying to get some notices out to that to get you to put in your, put in your nominations. So, um, Bill, uh, Michelle, any final comments? Happy holidays to everybody. Yep, thanks for having us. All righty. Everybody have a great week and a great uh, holiday uh, season coming up. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.